Hello, I'm Rebecca of Pocket Full of Posies, and welcome to the chaos that is making costumes for a production of Cinderella. And I wanted to do a quick little video because I'm making a lot of 18th century inspired costumes. They're not historically accurate, obviously, because they're for the theater and we have to do quick changes and things like that. But I am making quite a few 18th century petticoats and I thought well I know I've shared petticoats on my channel before but let's do this again and just kind of get a refresher course on the 18th century petticoat. The great thing about these petticoats is that they are very very economical size inclusive and adjustable because there is no oh, it has to be this certain waist size. If your weight fluctuates or if your size fluctuates, you can still wear it and it will still fit. It will always fit pretty much. To start out, you need a couple of measurements. You need your waist measurement, even though it doesn't have to be perfectly your waist measurement, because like I said, this is pretty adjustable as far as size goes, but you wanna get your waist measurement. If you have a really big difference between your waist measurement and your hip measurement, you wanna take your hip measurement as well, just around the fullest part just to, you know, be sure, especially if you're working with limited fabric. And then also you want your, the length that you want your skirt to be. So for an 18th century skirt, I am putting it pretty much ankle length for my chorus, for my ensemble, and making it a little bit lower for my leads when for the ball gowns for their fancier costumes so I'm starting out with two full widths you can't even see it so wide I think this is 52 inch width fabric two uh, full panels and if you use two full panels then you can use the selvage and you don't have to finish the side seams so that's pretty amazing so less sewing time and nothing's going to unravel. Now, the selvages on this fabric are a little floofy, so I will probably cut that floof off, although to be honest, I might not, because <laughs> it, it, does it really matter? No. All right, so what you want to do is you want to take, so you've got two pieces, and one's the front, and one is the back, and you sew up the side seams, so you sew up each seam, leaving eight to 10 inches at the top on e on both sides. So, so basically you have openings on both sides, but don't worry because they overlap a little, so it doesn't matter if your side seam is open. Now, if you wanted to really secure it, I suppose you could put snaps or hooks or something like that if you were worried about you know, someone saying what's going on underneath your skirt, but the skirt has enough volume and like I said, it overlaps. So it's not really an issue. And also you can wear an 18th century pocket underneath and then access the pocket. All right. So I cut this to the length I wanted it for my actress and she's not super tall. I cut it for her waist to floor measurement basically and what you want to do is you can now if you want to go 18th century you're going to want to pleat it pleat each side down and that's kind of up to you whether you want to pleat it or gather it pleating is the more historical method for getting it down to your waist size so Essentially, what you're going to do is you're going to pleat the front piece down to roughly half your waist size and the back piece down to roughly half your waist size. And I usually add, or I don't go all the way down. So like, for example, if my waist is 50 inches, then I wouldn't do 25 per side. I would probably do 26, 27 per side so that I have some overlap and I have some more adjustability because it doesn't matter how 
much you don't want an incredible amount of overlap because then it might look kind of strange on the sides but a little overlap is perfectly fine at the sides now so let's get pleating but first pin and sew the side seams leaving the top 8 to 10 inches unsewn you could leave less of an opening you just want to make sure you have enough room to get it over your hips for the waistband i have used twill tape bias tape ribbon etc. You could make a fabric waistband if you want as well. I am using bias tape here and it can stretch a bit so be aware of that. Cut two, one for the front waistband and one for the back. If you use twill tape or ribbon you can cut the waistband and ties all in one. For that method cut your ribbon or twill tape the full length of your waist measurement plus enough to tie in a bow. Overestimate because you can always trim it later. To pleat the skirt panels to the waistbands, mark the center of the skirt panels and the center of the waistbands and match them up right sides together. Next, fold over the ends of the bias tape and pin it to the edges of the skirt panel. Then start pleating. I eyeballed my pleats, but you could divide the width of your skirt panel by the length of your waistband if you want to be more precise. Now to sew the waistband on. For my waist ties, I used half inch twill tape, cut to the waistband length and more for tying. Cut four of these, two for the front sides and two for the back sides. Now we'll secure one end of each tie inside the sides of the waist. Go ahead and fold over and pin the waistband to the inside. To secure the ties, I sewed a couple of lines of stitches over the sides of the waistband, catching the ties inside. Then I sewed the waistband down on the inside of the skirt panels. You could do this by hand very easily as well. And doing it by hand means that you'll see less of it on the outside, so you might prefer that look. I also sewed the seam allowance down at the side openings. Okay, now that our waistband and ties are on, it is done except for the hem. So I'm just going to get all of this string, <laughs> all of these little thread pieces off, but then I'm just going to give it a small him about a half, half an inch so I'll turn up a quarter and then turn up another quarter and just run it through the machine to hem it and that's it super simple super easy and quick to make as I said before I have made a lot of these skirts and they always come out wonderfully they're great for history bounding too you could definitely make them shorter for a more modern look 
play around with trim, or really anything your creative minds can envision. How would you make these skirts? Let me know down in the comments. To wear and put them on, put it on over your head or step into it, it doesn't matter. Take the back ties and tie them in the front. Be sure to get the proper supervision from your canine and feline helpers. Next, take the front ties and tie them in the back. The side openings allow easy access to your pockets. And that's that. And with the hem done, we are finished. I have made quite a few of these petticoats for this production. I made this one yesterday. For the stepmother. <laughs> and each one took me between an hour and two hours, maybe an hour and a half. Um, so like I said, this one was quicker because I used a thrifted curtain, so it was already hemmed, so I didn't have to do that. So this one, this one was really quick. It was about, took me about an hour. And then the pink one took, let's see what time is it? 9.50. I started about 8 this morning, so almost two hours. There you go. You've got a skirt. The amount of yardage you need depends on your waist measurement and also how long you want it to be. If you made it shorter, you might need two yards total. And if you, if you want it longer or if you're tall and you want it long, you might need more yardage. Also, the width of your fabric could make a difference if you choose a fabric with a wide width of, you know, 50 to 60 inch width, then you've got no problems as far as the width goes because you still have plenty of fabric to pleat down. If you have a larger waist size or a larger hip size and you have a narrower width fabric, you might not have as much to pleat down. So you want to take that into account when you're selecting your fabric. But all in all, it's a good project. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you spending your time with me. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe if you haven't, and if you'd like to be notified whenever I upload, you can hit that little bell icon. If you'd like to support the channel further, I have a coffee account and that is linked down below. Again, thank you so much and I will see you on our next sewing adventure. Bye!